what's going on, y'all? So the other day I was on Twitter and I just came across some crazy nonsense. So I was actually looking at Little Nas X promoting some Satan shoes. And I'm like, what the hell? This nigga is supporting Satan shoes. Are you serious? Are you serious? And it just kind of blew my mind. It blew my mind because I had never seen anything like, well, you know, you, you see Satan stuff on the internet here and there. You see some lunatic come out talking about, you know, the coming of Satan and all this type of stuff. You see crazy stuff like that from time to time. But I didn't expect it to come from Nas X. Now, for those of you who don't know, Nas X is a rapper and he's a gay rapper. And, you know, he, he made his debut in a song called old town country road or old country road or something like that so recently he made a video where he comes out and he's actually on he dies and he's on his way up to heaven but just before he gets to heaven he ends up sliding down the pole going to hell and then he has sex with the devil he kills the devil and then he takes the devil's weave and put it on his, put it on his head the weave is like uh, horns or whatever so I'm like, you know, this dude just done lost his mind. And, and part of me is like, you know, maybe he's making a statement. And, you know, maybe, you know, this is just some uh, creative artistry. But to be honest with you, it's hard for me to say that because there's a long history of these artists coming out making these demonic songs or they're making uh, demonic videos and, you know, word on the street is that you know people are saying that uh any every artist who wants to make it big they have to basically make a video or make a song that's pledging their soul to the devil they say snoop did it and he did it and his song murder was a case that they gave me you know he dies and then he goes a voice spoke to me and it slowly started saying bring your lifestyle to me and i'll make it better then snoop goes how long will i live the voice says eternal life and forever and then Snoop says, and will I be the G that I was? And then the voice says, I'll make your life better than you can imagine or even dreamed of. So relax your soul. Let me take control. Close your eyes, my son. And then he goes, my eyes closed. I mean, that, 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 when, you, when you listen to the actual lyrics, anyone that's conscious, that's listening to the actual lyrics of a song like that, that basically makes hairs crawl up on the back of your neck right you know uh dmx did it right you know dmx actually has three songs where you know he hooks up with this cat named damien who wants him to kill people so on and so forth all of this could be a coincidence maybe it's in my mind uh who else did it bone thugs and uh, harmony did it uh when they make made a song called uh, mo murder right when they're just talking about killing people for no reason you know so maybe i'm crazy or maybe I'm just retarded for believing people when they say that all artists, in order for them make it, to make it big, they have to make a song where they pledge their life to the devil. And here, I think uh, Little Nas X is no exception, right? You know, so he has a song, Montero. And as I said, you know, he's on his way to heaven. He ends up choosing to go to hell by sliding down the pole. I don't know if it's actual choice, but he slides down the pole, has sex with the devil, and then kills the devil and takes the devil weaved horns or whatever you want to call it you know so now it gets crazier right you know because everyone knows that artists does this thing and this is kind of a tradition i don't know if it's a real satanic thing or not you guys let me know comments below right but it gets crazier because nas x comes out and he starts promoting shoes and this is how i came how i became aware of all this stuff and first, I want to say Nas X situation is a little different because to me, it seems like he has issues with the church, right? You know, and before I even go a little deeper into this, let me just first say I support the LGBT community. I don't have any hate or malice towards the LGBT community, uh, you know, so I just need to get that, get that out there. But I'm also a Christian, not the best Christian. And if you knew me, you wouldn't even believe that I was a Christian from the way I carry myself, right? You know, so I'm just not that good of a Christian. But I do believe in God. I do, you know, believe that I'm a Christian, right? And I think Christianity 
well, not Christianity, all religions. All religions, they have some pros and cons, but there are three major benefits uh, to religion, right? One benefit is that you have a place where you can come to basically advance yourself spiritually, right? So that's one benefit. The other benefit is that if you're in a state of chaos, you have a place to go where you can kind of work through that chaos, right? You know, the second benefit. The third benefit is that I know of no other organizations besides religious organizations that feed the hungry, uh, nurse the sick, and basically uh, assist the poor. I don't know of any other organization that, that does all three of those. I know there are some medical organizations out there that's dedicated to helping sick children so on and so forth but usually those organizations we rely on the benevolence of you know the public whom donate more than likely because of their religious beliefs you know so religion has a very important role in our society it number one through spirituality we learn morals and through morals we get a parameter uh, a general sense of right and wrong right now, I'm going to say that one of the bad things, because there are some bad things about religion. I'm not going to go through all of them. I mean, one of the bad things is that, you know, sometimes you have, you know, fanatics who believe they should blow people up because they don't worship the way they do. And then sometimes you have people who go out in the street and they persecute other people who don't worship the way they do. So, I'm not naive. I'm not going to be stupid and say that there's no negatives about religion. I know that there are lots of negatives about religion, right? You know, so uh, one of the worst ones probably of them all is that, you know, sometimes people become so gullible uh, with religion that, you know, they can't even function in the world, right? You know, so you you end up, you know, being this idiotic, gullible person, uh, you know, that you know, can't interact with all the people around you. And it's just kind of funny because some ministers or some preachers will push that. They say, you know, do, do not be of this world. Well, I mean, you're living in this world, so you got to be of it. I mean, unless you're just going to live under a rock, you got to be of this world. You got to know how to pay your taxes. You got to know how to, you know, uh, go and interact with other people. You don't want to be ostracized, so on and so forth, right? You know, I'm not even going to go too deep down that tangent. I'm just not simply trying to say there are some negatives. But with that said, I think that one of the negatives is that the, the LGBT community, some of them has been ostracized by the church or other religions, right? Or religion in general, right? There's lots of scriptures in the Bible that talks about how you should uh, forsake homosexuality. Uh, there's lots of scriptures in the Bible that talks about homosexuality for the negative life. And because of this, I can see how some LGBTQ people felt they were not accepted in the church, especially if you have church members actively talking about, uh, you know, forsaken home people who are homosexual or so on and so forth, right? So I can imagine for centuries that people in that community have been oppressed and the church is one of those institutions that oppress them. So there's a lot going on with Little Nas X, right? I think me personally, and this is just me personally, and I hope that I'm wrong, but I think Little Nas X could possibly have some deep spiritual issues, right? Or maybe he's happy spiritually and his religion is Satanism. You know, maybe that's just really the case and you just have to see it for what it is, right? You know, because who does that, right? I can see that you're going to make the video because it's a rite of passage and you really don't believe in this stuff, but you, you're making it because you have to because you want to get that money. I can see someone being young, young and naive and doing that, right? But the shoes? You promote Satan's shoes, <laughs> Who in the hell promotes Satan shoes? You know what I mean? Who does that? You didn't see Snoop after making Murder Was a Case start going out and promoting uh, Satan hats or Satan shirts. You didn't see DMX do that. 
You didn't see uh, any of those other artists do that. They just made the little song and then that was it. Right? This dude takes it a step further. Now he want to make shoes. Maybe maybe they up the ante. They, maybe they're saying not only do you have to make a, a song or a video, you also have to go the extra mile and promote a product. You know, maybe that's the case. Maybe I'm crazy. You guys let me know. Am I crazy? Are people in entertainment uh, making these songs and these videos because it's a satanic rites of passage and they have to accept Satan in their lives in order to get the fame and fortune? Is that what's actually going on? Or do you think it's just some weird tradition that they do or and they've just been doing it and nobody's ever questioned it? Questions and comments below. Let me know what you guys think. But this is a well-known thing. This is a well-known allegation against uh, people in the uh, entertainment, the people who've made it big in the entertainment industry, right? So I think Nas X has some deep spiritual issues because he went a step further. He's promoting these shoes, and I think because he's in the LGBT community. It's possible that he's been ostracized or maybe he hasn't been actively ostracized. Maybe he's been in a situation where, you know, he's been going to church and then he constantly hear these scriptures about homosexuality and how, you know, it's not right. And maybe he's heard church members uh, tell others to denounce it. And maybe he just got fed up with it and maybe that affected him in the church. I don't know. I'm just speculating, right? None of this is. I'm none of this stuff that I'm saying is based on any facts. I don't have any evidence of this stuff. I'm just speaking out of the side of my head, right? Now, regardless of whether or not Little Nas X has some spiritual issues, uh, unfortunately, I think that Little Nas X and Satan, or Satan and Little Nas X, is going to rule. Nike, right? Why do I say that? So right in front of me, I have before me this lawsuit by Nike Incorporated, and it's against Mischief Products Studio Incorporated. Mischief Products is the company who actually made the Satan shoes, and I, from my understanding, they also made some Jesus shoes, right? From my understanding is that they just take products off the shelf and then they re- design them and then they just resell them right so with that being said let's get into this lawsuit right you know so we're not going to go through all this i read the lawsuit it's a pretty straightforward lawsuit right so let's just go ahead and get into it it goes mischief is currently taking orders for shoes it refers to as satan's shoes which are customized nike air max 97 shoes that mischief has materially altered to prominently feature a satanic theme. This was done without Nike's approval or authorization, and Nike is in no way connected to with this project. Below is an image of the genuine Nike Air Max 97 uh, next to mischief customized Satan shoe. Right, the material alterations include. We're not going to read that because we can just see. You know, so here is the shoes that Nike would typically sell. And this is what mischief is basically doing, right? You know, so there's supposedly a drop of human blood. There, there has, uh, there's a scripture quote, Luke 10, 18. And then there is a six slash six, 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 meaning this is the sixth pair of 666 uh, shoes that, that are to be made, right? And it goes on to say, Nike, has not and does not approve or authorize mischief customized Satan shoes. Moreover, mischief and its unauthorized Satan shoes are likely to cause confusion and dilution and create erroneous association between mischief, uh, mischief products and nights. In fact, there is already evidence of significant confusion and dilution occurring in the marketplace, including calls to boycott night in response to the launch of mischief Satan shoes based on the mistaken belief that Nike has authorized or approve this product. Nike files this lawsuit to maintain control of its brand, to protect its intellectual property, and to clear the confusion and the dilution that the marketplace by selling the record straight. Nike has not 
and does not approve or authorize mischief custom Satan shoes. As an innovative brand that it strives to push the envelope and do the right thing, Knight knows it may not please everyone all the time, but the decision about what products to push the swoosh on belongs to Knight, not to third parties like Mischief. Knight requests that the court immediately and permanently stop Mischief from fulfilling all orders for unauthorized Satan shoes. Right, and then it talks about the parties. The parties are based, unfortunately, Little Nod's ex is not in this lawsuit. I don't know why he's not in this lawsuit. From my understanding, this was Little Nod's ex's brainchild. I have no evidence of that. I'm speculating. That's my own allegation. It's more than likely not true. Uh, but it's just something I just kind of uh, deduce from like looking at the uh, Twitter, uh, looking at the Twitter post, right? But apparently, uh, according to this lawsuit, they saw the advertisement for uh, the Satan shoes on another Twitter post, right? Um, so jurisdiction and venue, basically they're using federal statutes to get this thing into federal court, which is where this thing is, right? So we get into the factual background. We're not going to read all this. We're going to just go through some of this. Nike's principal business activity is a design development, worldwide marketing and selling of athletic foot apparel, equipment, accessories, and services. Nike is the largest seller of athletic shoes or athletic footwear and apparel in the world. Nike sells this product directly to consumers through Nike-owned retail stores and digital platforms and to retail accounts and mix of independent distributors, licensees, and sales representatives virtually all in, virtu in virtually all countries around the world. Nike uses trademarks on nearly all of its products. And I'm just going to skip ahead because um, most of this is, you know, there's there's nothing striking in this lawsuit. It's, it, it just kind of repeats itself. So um, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit has re referenced the Nike swoosh design as an example of a famous trademark that assume an exalted status, consumers sometimes buy the products being marks uh, such as the Nike swoosh for the appeal of the mark itself without regard to whether it signifies the origin or sponsorship of the product, right? You know, so you, you're buying, they're saying you're buying Nikes because they're Nike. You don't care, you don't really care where the Nikes came from. You don't care, uh, you know, where the quality of the shoes, you're not looking at all that. You just buying it because it's Nike, right? So let me scroll down. They talk about the actual trademark of Nike and how the trademark was registered in 1972. Uh, and they, the last trademark of Nike was uh, August 11, 2020. Retail store services, online retail store service featuring apparel, footwear, sporting goods, and equipment in sports and fitness and products and accessories. And then they talk about how they trademarked the symbol, uh, the Nike swoosh, uh, which was originally done in 1974. But you can see it's actually changed a little bit uh, from 1974 to 1984 and 85. And they actually trademark a, you know, the footwear. And this uh, new trademark of Nike uh, was done in 1985. So they have these trademarks of their product, right, which they legitimately own their uh, you know, they have the uh, ownership over that and they have the right to sell Nike products, right? Now, um, here is one of the Twitter posts and I didn't actually see this Twitter post. I actually saw another Twitter post. As I said, it was Little Nas X Twitter post and that's how I became aware of his video and his actual shoes, right? So now I'm kind of confused because I don't know if or actually it is it, it does say little Nas X so mischief X little Nas X Satan shoes so little Nas X is involved with this I don't know why his name is not in his lawsuit if I were not I would have put his name in the lawsuit and tried to sue him as well uh, because you want to like if they win they generally want to send a message you know, that they're not to be toyed with. It's, it's their product. Well, no one should be toyed with. You know, no one should be able to take your product and basically uh, rebrand it and put it out there, right? So I think there's some more images of the shoe. There's nothing in this lawsuit that jumps out at me. I think the lawsuit just mentioned, just outlines the, 
you know, lays out the facts and it gives you some details about Nike and the history of Nike, so on and so forth. But it doesn't really say anything uh, about um, Nike itself. And there's actually a big problem with this lawsuit. And I'm surprised and amazed that there could be such a problem. But here are the satanic shoes. And again, I just think Little Nas X has some very serious uh, spiritual issues because who in the hell sells Satan shoes? You're not in your right mind if you're selling stuff like this. You're just not. You couldn't be. You couldn't be in your right mind if you out selling something like this. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to leave it right there. And you can see it has the... Uh, the five-pointed star, the pentagram, or the symbol of Baphomet, as they say, um, the horns, the ears, and then, you know, the, the, the mouth or the beak, or whatever. So this is just some crazy nonsense. And then they go on to say, in a short time since the announcement of the Satan shoes, Nike has suffered significant harm to its goodwill, including among consumers who believe that Nike is endorsing Satanism. Example of an online consumer commentary are uh, produced below. And these are people saying, never buy Nike uh, shoes again. Bunch of hypocrites. 100 crazy. They need Jesus. This is terrible. Won't buy Nike again. I'm appalled. Words cannot describe the amount of disgust and disbelief that this is truly happening. Jesus, please save us. Never support or buy Nike again. Right? You know, so people are believing this is a Nike product. And then there, there are more uh, comments of the same. They couldn't put a, a scripture on the St Stephen Curry sneakers, but they can for this. F Nike, right? So, yeah, so they, they're getting some bad publicity, and this isn't even their product. Uh, as shown below, mischief is deceiving consumers into believing that Nike manufactures or approves of Satan's shoes, and consumers believe that Satan's shoes our genuine night products is causing consumers to never want to purchase any night products in the future. Right? So they're essentially destroying the brand. So basically the counts are count one trademark infringement in violation of 15 USC 1114. I'm not going to read it because it doesn't really say anything that jumps out. Right? Uh, it doesn't say it's just a lot of, um, mumbo jumbo basically. Um, the titles are more telling than what's actually in the paragraphs. That's what I'm trying to say. Count two, false designation of origin, unfair competition, and violation of 15 U.S.C. 1125A. Count three, trademark dilution and violation of 15 U.S.C. 1125C. And count four, common law trademark infringement and unfair competition. And they're asking for a jury. And essentially, they, they're asking for, of course, they're asking for pain and suffering. And they're asking for a, dudg a judgment based on the facts. They're asking that uh, mischief stop, of course, making these damn shoes. And they're asking that they turn over any and all material associated with these shoes so that Nike can destroy it, right? You know, so there's nothing outrageous or nothing that stands out in the prayer for relief. Now, here's the problem. Here is the problem with this lawsuit. And unfortunately, I have to say that Satan and Little Nas X is going to rule. They're going to rule over Nike. That's my own opinion. And you guys let me know what you think. The first thing I notice is that they didn't give any case law and the when i say they didn't give any case law they didn't they didn't give any case law that basically says that mischief cannot do this they provided case law and that case law basically says that you know nike is known for its trademark okay fine they provided that case law but they didn't provide any case law to say that one entity cannot take the product from another entity and alter it and sell it as that, you know, the purchasing enti entity sees fit, right? <clears throat> or they didn't, they didn't show any case law to say that you can't purchase something and then sell it. So 
The case law that they provided is the U.S. Court of Appeals and Ninth Circuit has referenced the Nike swoosh design an example, as an example of a famous trademark that it has assumed an exalted status. Consumers sometimes buy products here bearing marks such as the Nike swoosh for the appeal of the mark itself without regard to whether it signifies the origin or sponsorship of the product, right? That's the case law that they provided, but that case law does not provide the judge with any ammunition to say that mischief has done something they can't do. Now, of course, I think what mischief is doing is immoral, and I think they need to stop. But again, I think that Satan and mischief is going to rule. And the reason I say that is because they have something that's called the uh, first first sale doctrine, right? So I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go over to Title 17 of the United States Statutes and Codes. Uh, Title 17 covers copyrights. And then I am going to go down to 106, which covers exclusive rights and copyrighted works. I think this is where I need to be. Let me click on it and see. I could be wrong. And when I click on it, I don't know if you can see the pop-up because my recording software is kind of uh, funky. But I get a pop-up, and it talks about uh, US 17 106, number 3. Well, first, first off, U.S. Uh, 17 U.S.C. 106 talks about exclusive rights and and copy copyrighted works. Then it goes on to say, subject to sections 107, 122, the owner of copyright under this title has exclusive rights to and to authorize any of the following to reproduce uh, the copyrighted works and copies of phone cards. We're just going to skip down to three. It says to distribute copies of phone cards of copyrighted works to public by sale or transfer of ownership or by rental, lease, or lending, right? However, there is a something called first rights, first sale doctrine, which basically says that once a copyright owner sells something, he gives up all rights to that particular item that he sold. So once you as a buyer actually buy something, you have the right to do with it whatever you choose. If you want to throw it in the garbage, that's your right. If you want to deface it and throw it in the garbage, that's your right. If you want to paint it, that's your right. And unfortunately for Nike, if you want to resell it, that's your right. As a matter of fact, if you think about this, we do this in our everyday lives without a thought. You could buy a car. And once you've paid that car right, you can paint it. You can uh, put different rims on it. And because you painted it and you put different rims on it and you've given it a custom job, you have a right to sell that car for whatever you want to sell it with or whether someone is willing to buy it for. Uh, another example of this is a comic book. You could probably buy a comic book and, you know, your little sister or your little brother may get the comic book and they may scribble or they may write on it. They've defaced or devalued the product. But if someone else is willing to buy that product, then you have the right to sell it, right? Uh, what's another example? You know, uh, you know, there's tons of examples because we do it in our everyday lives, right? Um, you're buying copyrighted work, and once you buy that work, you have the right to do with it whatever you want to do with it, so long as you're not harming somebody, right? Uh, but essentially, essentially, once it's sold, the person or the copyright owner gives up all rights to that product. So in this situation, it's going to be tricky because what's happening is that Mischief is buying the product, and because they bought the product, they have a right to resell that product, right? 
And I'm not trying to advocate on the behalf of Satan Shoes, because trust me, I do not support no goddamn Satan Shoes. And I actually started off trying to find case law to, you know, to support Nike, but you know, I ended up finding case law that basically supports, um, you know, mischief products, maybe, right? So mischief has purchased the shoes, and because they've purchased the shoes, they have a right to sell the shoes. Now, because they purchased it and they have the right to sell it, I believe they also have the right to repurpose it, right, or redesign it. Because at that point, they own the actual product. So the problem that's happening here is that they are destroying the Nike brand. So maybe what Nike needs to put in their prayer for relief is to remove the Nike branding, right? To remove the Nike swoosh sign and to remove anything that resembles Nike. Because I think Nike may win uh, for for copyright infringement in the sense that, you know, they're displaying Nike products as if, you know, Nike is making these products. They're, they're making it look as if Nike may, is making these products when they're clearly not making these products. So they may win from that perspective. They may win from that perspective, but I think after it's all said and done, I think Mischief is probably going to come out on top. I think after it's all said and done, unfortunately, Satan and Little Nas X is probably going to rule in this situation. Uh, you guys, let me know what you think. Uh, comments below. Uh, have you found anything to say that Mischief cannot do this uh, by law? Share that with me. Uh, for the most part, this is what I found. And it looks like Nike doesn't have a chance in hell. <laughs> no pun intended. But let's see what happens. You know, again, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I'm just some guy on the internet reading legal documents. So everything that I say is, you know, coming from a layman's uh, line of thinking. So I would love somebody to check me up on this, right? Prove me that I'm wrong, right? Um, yeah, you know, so that's it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, questions or comments below. I'm really interested to hear what the general public thinks about this. Do you think that Nike is going to lose? Do you think that Mischief has a right to buy something, change it, and do whatever they want to do with it and resell it? I can tell you there's plenty of case law of people buying a product and reselling it. But what I wasn't find was I wasn't able to find was a case where a person bought something, redesigned it, and sold it. And, you know, had that go to court. So let me know what you guys think. Questions, comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.